الحمد لله يضع فما حمده جميع خلقه كما يحبه ويرضى اللهم صل على محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وسلم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأكرة من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا يسر ولا تعسر وتمم بالخير وبك نستعين يا فتاح سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العزيز الحكيم أن أبي ذر رضي الله تعالى عنه أن أناسا من أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قالوا للنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يا رسول الله ذهب أحلى الدثور بالأجور يصلون كما نصلي ويسومون كما نسوم ويتصدقون بفضول أموالهم قال أوليس قد جعل الله لكم ما تصدقون إن بكل تسبيحة صدقة وكل تكبيرة صدقة وكل تحميرة صدقة وكل تحليلة صدقة وأمر بالمعروف صدقة والنهي عن المنكر صدقة وفي بدع أهدكم صدقة قالوا يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أيأتي أحدنا شهوته ويكون له فيها أجر قال أرأيتم لو وضعها في حرام أكان عليه وزر كذلك إذا وضعها في الحلال كان له أجر رواه مسلم First of all we give all praise and all thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the favors and bounties which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed on us and we send salat and salam on his last and final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as we continue with understanding Imam an nawis for the hadith today inshallah we'll be doing hadith number 25 and hadith number 25 tells us about charity what is charity and do we really need wealth to be able to give charity when we hear about charity the first thing comes to our mind I need a big bank account I need to have plenty of money in order to give charity here in this hadith we will see Rasulullah informing them that you do not really have to have wealth to give charity charity is far much greater than only wealth welcome back as we continue hadith number 25 of Imam an nawis for the hadith the translation from Abu Dhar radiallahu ta'ala anhu said that a group of people from the Sahaba radiallahu anhum they came to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they said Ya Nabi Allah, O Prophet of Allah Dhahaba ahlu al-dhuthur bil ujur Fairly the affluent people have gone forth you have taken away all the blessings. You salluna kama nusalli, they are praying just as how we are praying. Yasumuna kama nasumu, they are fasting just as how we are fasting. Yatasaddaquna bi fuduli amwalihim, and they are giving charity with whatever extra wealth they have. Kala Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Awalaysa ka ja'ala allahu lakum ma tusaddaquna? Haven't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made for you what you could give charity as well? He says, Inna bi kulli tasbihatin sadaqa. Well, each tasbih, each subhanallah is sadaqa. Wa kullu takbiratin sadaqa. And every takbir, every Allahu Akbar is sadaqa. Wa kullu tahmiratin sadaqa. And every alhamdulillah is sadaqa. Wa kullu tahlilatin sadaqa. And every la ilaha illallah is sadaqa. Wa amrim mil ma'roof is sadaqa. And joining what is good is sadaqa. Wa nahi anin munkar in sadaqa. Prohibiting from evil. 
from wrong is sadaka. Wa fi budi ahdikum sadaka. And even having relationship with one's spouse, to have sexual relation with your wives, that is also sadaka. So they, the Sahaba, they say, Ya Rasulullah, Ayyati sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ayyati ahduna shahwatuhu wa yakuna lahu fiya ajr. It says, if one of us, we fulfill our pleasures, fulfill our desires with our spouses, will we get a blessings for that as well? Or Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Ara'aytum law wada'a fi haram. What do you think if you were to do it in a haram fashion? If you are to have relation, sexual relation in a haram way with someone beside your spouse, a kan alayhi wazr, wouldn't you have the burden upon, wouldn't that be a burden on you? Wouldn't you be sin? Wouldn't you be committing a sin? So he says, فَكَذَلِكَ Like that, either وَضَعَ فِي halal. Whenever you do it in a, in a halal way, whenever you have sexual relation in a halal way, كَانَ لَهُ أَجْرُ That will be as a means for ajr and reward. So this hadith speaks about Charity. Charity is something great. And what the Sahabas, the poor, amongst the Sahabas, there were many, a lot of the Sahabas were poor. Some of them, before they accepted Islam, they were rich, they were wealthy. And when they came into Islam and the, the time came to spend, they would spend and they would spend and they would spend. Until that they had, at the time of their passing away, at the time of their death, they had nothing with them. They had no kind of property with them. So from being rich, because of wanting to get the blessings of giving charity, they give and they give and they give. And nothing was remained, nothing had remained with them. And like this, my dear respected brothers and sisters, we look in the life of the Sahabas and we see Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu. There was a group of Sahabas which are considered to known as Ashab as Sufa, they were very poor. They used to live on whatever Rasulullah was given to Rasulullah, he would give them a portion of it. And that is what they used to survive. Abu Hurairah only a few only a few years before Rasulullah passed away, he became a Muslim. And the amount of hadith that you will hear from Abu Hurairah, people started to, to wonder why is it, how is it that he is able to memorize so many hadith? And Abu Hurairah would say, whilst my Muhajir brothers, they went to do their trade and their businesses. While they were on their field, while they were uh, trading and they were in the marketplace, I was with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I left off all trade. While my Ansari brothers, they were in the field and they were planting, I was with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, learning from him hadith. That he was very hungry at once. And... He came to Abu Bakr who was very hungry. So he came to Abu Bakr anhu, and he says to Abu Bakr, inform me about the meaning of such and such ayat. Abu Bakr anhu, he told him whatever was it and Abu Bakr went away. Then he came to Umar anhu, came to Umar's home. When he came to Umar's home, he was expecting that Umar would have treated him as a guest and he was taking him and he was giving him something to eat. So he asked him, do you know, could you give me the tafsir of this ayat, the explanation of this ayat? So Umar anhu, he told him the explanation, even though Abu Hurairah had already knew the explanation. He was just using that as an excuse because of hunger in order to get something to eat. And Umar anhu, he told him the explanation and he said, all right, go ahead, go along. And Abu Hurairah, he left very hungry. And when he was so hungry, he fell by the side of the road. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he saw Abu Hurairah anhu and he already knew. As soon as he saw Abu Hurairah anhu, he already knew that he is very hungry. So Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went, took some milk, brought it to Abu Hurairah and gave, it him, gave him it to drink. And this was the poverty they went through and many of them went through poverty. Even the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his daughter and his son-in-law, Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha, they were in poverty. We see that many times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speak about these people. They were very poor, they were not wealthy. But what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? That these people, وَيَأْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ قَصَاصًا 
that they would prefer others over them even though they themselves was in need of it. There were things that they themselves needed but they would prefer others over themselves just so that they were able to assist and give charity. Once a guest came, once somebody came and they had no food and Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam he wanted to entertain them but he himself had nothing to give them to eat. And Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam he asked the Sahabas, which one of you have something that could entertain this guest for tonight? One Sahabi says, I, I will entertain him. Took him home, when he took him home his wife said, all I have is only enough for the children. We, I do not even have enough for myself and you, only what I have is for the children. The, the Sahabi he told her, put the children to sleep. Put the children to sleep and let us take out the light and let the guests have, his, have the meal. And we will do as if we are eating. And they did that. And the individual, he came and he ate his, his, he ate his fill. And he went, he was entertained very well by, by these Sahabas. In the morning when Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa so the Sahabi came to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said this ayat is revealed. Allah is very pleased of what you did by you entertaining that guest and giving them what was there for you and your children to eat, to give it to him. Allah says, وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهُمْ They would prefer others over themselves وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ قَصَاصَ Even though they themselves was very in need. Even, if, even though they had needed it. And we have seen it in many of the Sahabas. Ali radiallahu anhum. Another ayat is revealed concerning Ali and Fatima radiallahu anha. Allah says, وَيَتْئِمُونَ تَعَمَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّي مِسْكِينَ وَيَتِيمَ وَأَسِيرَ One day they were fasting and in the evening to break their fast. When they were going to break their fast and knock on the door. Yet a miskin was there, a poor person, he said, Oh Ali radiallahu anhu, give me some of what Allah has given to you. And they took the food that they had, all that they had and they gave it, so they didn't have anything. The second day they were fasting again, when ready time to eat, time to break their fast. A yatim, an orphan came and the same thing, they gave their food to the orphan. And then the third day a, a yasir, a asir, sorry, a captive came and he said, I've just been released, can you assist me? And they gave him the food and for this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was very happy and Allah was very pleased. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them a lot of blessings for those kind of acts of charity. Welcome back. <coughs> Continue with hadith number 25 of Imam an nawis for the hadith. And this as we, we end just now. The story of Ali radiallahu anhu and Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha. It was a very sad story, but they did it for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They did it in order to gain Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's happiness and Allah's pleasure. In that time, they were very poor, they had nothing to eat. So Ali and Fatima radiallahu anha, they started to fast in the morning. And when fasting in the morning, they went out during the day to get something so that they could make it to eat in the night. After working very hard, after getting that food, they took it home. Ali Radiran went to the masjid, prayed the Maghrib. Now he's coming home saying that I'm going to eat. He and his wife Fatima Radiran sat down to eat. And at that time, a miskin knocks on the door. Opens the door, the miskin asks for something which Allah has bestowed on them. And the only thing they had with them at that time was the food that they were going to break their fast and they were going to eat. And they took it and they gave it to the miskin. They gave it to the poor person. They went and they slept without anything in their stomach. The next day they decided to fast again. They went out again to work in order to get something to bring home to eat for when it's time to break the fast. They got a few things, they brought it home, very little. Fatima Radha Anha prepared it the second day. The food is already prepared. Ali Radir Anhu, after breaking his fast, he went to the masjid, performed his maghrib, and coming back, sits down with his wife, Fatima Radir Anha, and they're going to eat. There's another knock on the door. And at this time, it is an yatim, an orphan. He says, Oh Ali Radir Anhu, I have no parents, I'm an orphan. Can you give me something? I'm very, I'm very hungry. Could you give me something to eat? Ali Radir he goes and he picks up the food and he gives it to the orphan. 
and again they spend the night without anything in their stomach. And after that night, this, the third night now, the third day, they say we're still going to fast. Imagine two days without anything, working during the day and nothing to eat in the night. And the third day they say we're going to fast. And they fast again, went out to get something to prepare in order to break their fast. Same thing happened the third day when they sit down, he and his wife, Fatima radila anha, and knock on the door. This time there's an asir, there's a captive. Captives say, I've, been now, I've now been freed from the enemies and I have nothing to eat, I'm starving. Can you give me something to eat? And at that time, Ali radil anhu. Most of us, we, we, we do not have that iman to do what these sahabas did. He took his food for the third day. At the time of breaking the fast, as we all know, a hungry man is an angry man. But that was not the case with them. Ali radil anhu very peacefully he went, he picked up the food and he gave it to him. And they stayed for that third night. And then Allah revealed his ayat. The ayat in Surah al dahr Allah says, We yutimuna ta'ama ala hubbihi miskina wa yatima wa asira. And they will give food to those whom he loved from the poor, the miskin, the yatim, the orphan, and the asir, the prisoner. The only reason he did it is for the pleasure of Allah. He wanted to gain the pleasure of Allah. He didn't want any money from anyone. He didn't want any good name from anyone. The only reason he and his wife Fatima did that was to gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Sahabas, they were eager into giving sadaqah. So these Sahabas, now they came the message, the message of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they are seeing some, they have seen those people who are affluent and those people who are wealthy to themselves. They were saying that these people have gone ahead, they are very affluent. They have wealth and they say, we are praying and they are praying too. So the same blessings we get for our prayer, these people are getting for their prayer. We are fasting and they are fasting. So the same blessings that we are getting for our fast, they are getting for their fast. Where to sadaquna bi fuduli amwalihim. But they are given charity with their wealth and we are not able to do that because we are poor. So how would we get the blessings? We get the same blessings with fasting with them. We get the same blessings of salat with them. But they are given charity and we have no money to give charity. So how would Allah grant us the blessings? So that is why they say, Dahba ahlu bil ujur. They have gone, they have taken all the blessings. Because they have wealth and they are able to spend. And then Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa taught them, that it is not only wealth that gives charity. Charity and sadaqah is not only about wealth, it is not only about giving the dollars, it is not only about giving money, but he says, haven't Allah granted you things that you can give charity? Every time you're saying subhanallah, that is a form of charity. See, if we want to give charity, we have no wealth. He's saying every time you say subhanallah, you're giving charity, that is a means of charity. وَكُلُّ تَكْبِيرَةٍ sadaqa. Every time that you're saying Alhamdulillah, that is a form of charity, that is a form of sadaqa. Every time you're saying Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, that is a form of charity. Every time you're saying La ilaha illallah, that is a form of charity. Whenever you see someone is doing something bad and you encourage them to do good, you encourage that which is right, you encourage somebody to pray, you encourage someone to fast, you encourage someone to go and read the Quran, to learn how to read the Quran, that is also a form of sadaqah. No wealth was involved in it, just encouragement, that is a form of sadaqah. Nahyan in Munkar, you see someone is, is committing a sin and you advise them to stay away from that sin, that is a form of charity. And then he says something very interesting, he says, and to have even sexual relations with your spouses, with your wives, that is a means of sadaqah. So the Sahabas were astonished. We understand tasbih, tahmid, tahlil, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. But now you're telling us even if when we sleep in the night with our spouses, that is a form of sadaqah. And then Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he brings the analogy to them. He says, what do you think? If... You have your spouses and you are to go and sleep outside with some other individual who is haram for you. And you went and do that outside, wouldn't you be sin? Definitely you will be sin. So if that is a sin to do it, 
with someone besides your wife, then to do it with your wife, which is halal, definitely that will be a form of blessings. That will be a form of ajr and a form of blessings for you. So all of these things are considered to be charity, things of charity. Once uh, Ibn al juwayriya who was a very, very righteous individual, very pious, and he always used to be in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he sent a letter to Imam Malik, rahmatullah alayhi. Imam Malik was well known for his lectures, the teaching. So he was more engrossed in giving da'wah, teaching and learning. Even though Imam Malik was pious as well. But to the extent as Ibn Jawari, he was not that pious as means of always involved in dhikr. So Ibn Jawari, he sent a letter to Imam Malik. And he told Imam Malik that you should put aside some of that teaching and some of that lectures and you should try to be in the dhikr of Allah more. You should try to do more dhikr and do more du'as a little more. And Imam Malik he sent back a letter to him and told him each one has their own responsibilities. That you by doing dhikr, you are doing, that is a form of sadaqah by me, by I lecturing and by I teaching, that is also a form of, of sadaqah. So by I doing that as well is a form of sadaqah because encouraging what is right, teaching people and giving da'wah to that which is right, that is also a form of sadaqah. There was a man, every day he, when he comes to the masjid for fajr, he would walk with some money in his pocket. Because he wanted every single day, at the beginning of the day, he wanted to give some, some charity. So every day he comes to the masjid, he will come in the morning for fajr, and he, he will take out that money that we would walk with specially and search for someone to give zakat to. Not, not zakat, sorry, but to give his charity and his sadaqah. There was a, a man also, he was 80 years old, very old. And every day after the Fajr Salah, the people used to see him coming out with a broom in his hands. And he would come out and he would sweep and he would pick up all the garbage from the road. And they wanted to know why is it that this man is doing that every day. He's so old. Time for him to relax. Time for him to only pray and sit and relax. And yet every single day they see, they see him coming out with his broom and he's cleaning the pathway for people. And that man, he was doing that because that is a form of sadaqah, that is a form of charity. So by him doing that, he's getting blessings. And like that, charity is not only about spending, but charity is about doing good. Doing dhikr, reading the Quran, praying salat, encouraging others to do good. All that are forms of charity. So may Allah help us all, may Allah grant us the ability, the tawfiq, so that we could be involved in a lot of charity. May Allah grant us the blessings of doing those charity. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته